Hey guys. guys. It's hey Nicole. guys. You know, you say things. Me doing it? Me? Me, me say? Tonight's your night. Okay. Name. Basically, you guys, um, you should be watching this for me and Naren. Uh, mostly Naren because he has the beautiful golden locks that aren't golden because he is so metal. Um, they're, like, they're like blacker than the blackest black times infinity. Yeah, like you're born like Thor, but like once God saw you, you're like, this kid is too metal to have long hair. And I'm just glad we both have beards. <laughs> Anyways, the whole point of the show, we are going to talk about some crap, and we are going to rant about some things. So you guys in the PMP painting group, there's like something. Oh, are you hearing my? I'm sorry, I'm watching some hockey. Let me turn that down. You a hockey man? Oh, I love hockey. Who's your team? Uh, the New Jersey Devils. New Jersey actually, Devils, yeah. Actually, there's a story there if you want to hear. If you want, if you want it to be there and say story time. So uh, I, was, I was never. Yeah, yeah, let me finish introducing so they know why they're listening to our if nonsense. You know, if okay, scared. so you guys all have goals you need to finish, and I do too. I am slacking off, and I'm giving you guys the benefit of the doubt. You're probably going to end up doing better than me in the incentive race. And that's good for you because that means you'll end up getting a prize. But I will get my shit done. I am going to power through that like a true commission painter. But anyways, so basically what Naren and I are going to do, we're bored. It's a Friday night. We might as well just shoot the shit. So we're going to be talking about some Warhammer. We're going to be talking about some hockey. I'm going to go on a rant about vintage video games for a little bit if you want to tune out at that moment or not but um, basically this is for you guys to listen to and paint to and also if you guys have any questions about the um, the way the incentive points are set up at all it was a huge document I would not blame you if you did not read it I will explain it at the end of this show so Naren can you remind me to just Explain my shit. I'm going to do my best. Okay. Just be like, explain your shit, and I'll remember. I'll do my very best to tell you. Okay, so you guys, here's our journey. Um, don't hate us. Just love us for who we are. Go ahead, Naren. What's with the Jersey Devils? So, it was like 2009, and like I'd never watched a game of hockey in my life. And my brother's like, dude, you need to play NHL 09 with me this game kicks so much ass. And I'm like, dude, I'm really busy playing Call of Duty. Like, I don't know if I have time for that. And he's like, you have to. And I'm like, okay. So I end up losing like 9-0. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, that was probably one of the best games I've ever played. And then I'm like, but man, I'm really bad. So <laughs> I'm like, I play like three or four games of them or something, and I just keep getting dumped on every game. And I'm like, this is fucking awful. I'm like, I want to be good like he is. Like, I want to score goals and stuff. So uh, instead, though, I'm like, oh, you can play the goalie. I'm like, does anyone play the goalie? He's like, no. Always play the goalie. He's like, you don't play, always play the goalie. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, why would you play the goalie? I'm like, I don't know, because I suck at scoring. <laughs> Did you, like, run out of the goal and, like, punch people and stuff? And Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I play, now, like, that's the only video game I play. So, um, I'm like, well, who's the best goalie in the game? And, like, I go through it and, like, I do my research, and they're like, Martin Brodeur is, like, set to, like, break all these records, and he's, like, considered one of the best goalies of all time. And I'm like, well, what team does he play for? And he's like, the New Jersey Devils. So, I'm like, they're my favorite team, and he's my favorite player. <laughs> so, See, that's how the legend was born. My, how I started liking hockey... Besides that, I used to play um, NHL 97 on, like, Sega Genesis or something with my dad and didn't even know what that there were teams or that this was a real sport. But um, I remember one time I was really, really drunk, and I was at my friend's house. And when you get into a sport, basically you have to be like, all right, who are the superheroes of this sport? And, you know, they're going to look at you like, what the hell are you talking about? There's not superheroes. Who's the Michael Jack, like, uh, Jordan of this sport? You know, like, 
who are these two opposing superheroes that basically are being sold out beyond belief to be the best players, even though they're, they aren't always technically the best players. Like, uh, you, know, you know what I'm getting at, right? I follow. So kind of like uh, Michael Jordan or a um, LeBron James, you know, the kind of thing. And so I'm like, so he's like, okay. And I'm like, so who's the superheroes here? Who, who, am, I, who, who am I being? And he had me be the Blackhawks. And, um, oh, my God. I got my – it was like 21 to 0 to the point where I was just like, dude, you totally lied about the superhero. The he's the only one doing anything. And I was just sitting there, like, just starting fights with people that didn't even have the puck. And uh, that's my experience with, with hockey, my first, first experience into the new realm of awesome sports. Oh, the new NHL games are, they're insane. They're really good. They are very well made. Yeah, I don't, I don't play video games anymore, really, because, like, it's weird. I, I feel like I've digressed as a gamer or, like, gone back in time. Because I used to just, like, exclusively play video games, and then I was like, well, now I'm going to play D&D, because my buddy wants to play D&D. So I'm like, I'll play D&D, and then I started playing D&D, and then, like, board games, and then, like, I got into, like, LARPing and then, like, tabletop games like this, and I'm like, man, I'm like, video games are terrible because I play them. You're playing someone else's imagination, so I can understand why it would be... Well, the problem uh, is I, I just get done with it, and I'm like, what did I do for this, like, past, like, six hours? Oh. I, ha I, I shut that part off. I shut that part off. Uh, it, sometimes, sometimes, though, I'll play Halo after I've already beaten it, go through, like, levels that I've already beaten for no reason, just on a harder difficulty, just to say that I did it. And you'll just stare at the wall, like... See, but, like, that's the, the thing, hell? though. Like, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> I, like, I, uh, I, play, I played League of Legends for, like, two years, and I was a gold-rated, like, every season. And people are like, oh, I need to get gold. And I'm like, you know what, though? It doesn't feel good, because, like, you play League of Legends for, like, four to five hours a night, and then you're like, man, that was great. Now I'll go to bed. <laughs> and then, like, you know, you wake up, and you're just like, what did I do yesterday? Uh, I played... Six hours of League of Legends, and then like you know, you go and you see other people, and you're like, well, "What do you, what did you do? Oh, well, I like saw people and did this thing and did this thing. What did you do? I'm a gold-rated League of Legends player." M MMOs are the worst for that. Listen, um, I was playing uh, PC online, and I spent at least like uh, forty-eight hours on one character, and the way they set it up. It's like your character's like getting all beefed up and cool and badass and getting all these sweet powers. But then it's like once you get to level 30, it's like now you're part of the Justice League and you get to take care of the real threats that actually threaten the world. I've, I've been going into freaking Rick, uh, Richard Nixon voice all night. So if I go into that, just ignore it. But anyways, it's like now you're part of the, the JLA. And you can actually take care of the real villains of the world. And you're like, sweet, I'm all badass, I'm level 30, I have these flame powers. And legitimately, the first person you fight is so powerful, and it's just a gang member. He shoots you in the head, and you die. So, it's like, that now you have to spend 48 more hours to level up with team members. It's just... Ah, I hate that shit. Well, it's so addicting, and I hate that I fall for it every time. You what was that? You don't want to talk to me about MMOs. I was a, I was a real addict. My uh, my 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 name for everything on the internet is Naren Zade because that was my Star Wars Galaxies character. Um, <laughs> I was. Are you familiar with the game at all? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I was a, I was a Jedi in that game. Like, okay. It was like an incredibly incredible, hardly hard to unlock alpha class in the game. Um, you I, and Nick discussed the shit out of this. I remember the story. Yeah. Oh, I remember no, I, you were, Anyways, continue it. Like, everyone else needs to know this. I'm just, like, it's popping up in my head. Where did I hear this before? I yeah. knew you were a Jedi god. <laughs> I, yeah, I had, like, 
I would literally play like 20 to like 21 hours a day and I would like sleep for like three hours and like I would wake up and just play and like I dropped out of college, I broke up with girlfriends, like I got kicked out of my house, like... It's satisfying, right? Like, oh, but the thing was, though, is that there was there was never a more powerful Jedi than fucking Naren Zade, bro, all right? Like, no joke, like, I mean, like, in a, P, like in a PvP scenario in, like, a current MMO, if you beat two people, it's, like, impossible. Uh, yeah. I, there was a point where I 50 on one in, like, one. Oh like, my God. The, like the, because, because Jedi were an alpha class, like, they were legitimately better than every class, so... Um, yeah, it was just, it was incredibly addicting, and I played the game far too much, and, yeah. Then I really stopped playing MMOs, and I played WoW, and, like, I got kind of into that, um, but then, like, you know, after the, like, second expansion or whatever, it just kind of stopped See, being for, for me, um, I got into City of Heroes, City of Villains, and... I played City of Heroes once. Um, I was really obsessed with City of Villains for a long time, I did really well on that, and right now... I'm at a high standing, and I'm I spent way too much time in DC online, um, but it's just because I'm a comic book nerd, you know, and that's the satisfaction I got out of it. But it's always the same. All of those games are the same. They reach a point where you're just like, fucking, it just is what it is. Like you keep powering up, then there's a point where you power up and you can't power up anymore, and then you start killing each other. And it's just like, well, what's the point of this, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, like, that's why, um, I, like, that's why I like this hobby, though. Because I'm like, yeah, yeah, I sure did paint all those fucking Skaven since July. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, wow, holy crap, all those Skaven are still painted. Look at how good this looks. Wait, I did this. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah, I'm exactly. great. Like, that was one of the greatest things about art, and that's one of the biggest things for everyone that's on PMP right now watching, which is probably no one, but it, there's got to be one. Freaking, the best motivation, the best motivation is the aftermath. Like, with anything you do in life, you always have to think about the outcome, not what's happening at the now. Because that comes with working out, it comes with life and bills, it comes with everything. And if you apply that to Warhammer painting, you will get through it, and you'll have a cool-looking army, and you'll feel proud of it. Even if it's not the... Top, most top-notch army painted wise it's still something you did the only thing that separates me from this now I don't know if you've ever had this but do you have friends that aren't into the hobby at all and yeah. they just you'll like show them something you spent like I don't know like my mortis engine I spent 20 hours maybe painting and putting together and um, I showed it to one of my friends, and he just was like, he, he did this. He just is legitimately like, oh, that's cool. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Duh, ego kill. It's like you have no idea. <laughs> what? <laughs> Even my friends who like aren't into like the hobby aspect that much are still, like I show it to just people like just my friends, and they're like, oh wow. They're like, wait, like that comes in like the like how did how does that come? And I'm like, it comes on these gray sprues. Like, look at this. I show them like a picture of the sprues on my phone, and they're like, "Holy shit!" They're See, like, "That's I, incredible." I've only had two people appreciate it that way, and both of them are. Um, one was a stoner, and the other one was a freaking my guitar player. So it made sense in his aspect, where he's like, "You know, you have to practice this ability. You need to be able to build this up." And the other guy just thought it was cool because he likes fantasy shit and was high. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Which, to each his own. It doesn't matter. It's it's not a good time. At least he appreciated my models, you know? That's what it's about, man. So, yeah. So, that'll be good. Um, so, I guess, what you, you said you're, so you're into, like, vintage game. Oh, actually, no, we should probably talk about Warhammer for a minute, right? Yeah, let's get, let's get, get on Warhammer. Um, well, let me do the, let me do my point system real quick. Throw it out there. Um... We got to take a deep breath for it. And um, Naren, are you joining? Just post a picture of your Skaven. And just, just okay. Do it. Just I'm do incredibly. I mean, inc see, I would po I would be posting pictures and I would be posting on it, but I'm too busy actually fucking painting Skaven. Dude, just <laughs> <laughs> use your camera phone. Like double fist it. Like literally, if you have a picture of you painting Skaven, I I will give you one extra incentive point. 
I was going to say, just look, at, look at every video I've ever posted on this channel. They're all me just sitting here talking while I paint Skaven. Yeah, you're in your, like, jail cell painting Skaven. Just, it's like, it's your punishment. No, I um, can't come out of the basement until I'm done. All of these have to be finished. I'm kind of in that um, rut right now. I have 125 skeletons that I started. And, I, man... Talk about, like, lack of motivation. Um, but I'll digress into that later. Uh, basically, the incentive program that I set up, geniusly or not geniusly, depending on how you guys react, um, I was trying to do something that would be fair and base, not based on the model bases or sizes or anything like that because it gets confuddled, but by the actual league rules that you follow. So let's start off at the first point, and Naren, you can interject if you think this is a good idea. Oh, um, basically, you have the before, which you know we all know. You take the before picture, you post it up, and you post your goal. And for that, you get 10 points. Now, the next thing is the progression picture. You post that up, you post what you did, and what else you need to do. That's 10 points. And then the last thing is the finished product, and what you achieved, and what your goal was in the beginning, and that's the last thing, and that's 10 points. So each one of these, if you do them separately, are going to be worth 10 incentive points. But if you do them all together, you get 50 incentive points. And that's just to be keep this cohesive and give you an incentive to follow just everyone else to get in the same path. Now, besides that, um, on a live show, either during a hangout like this, but it will be more planned, and um, or even on Warhammer Weekly, or even my own show, where I probably just can do paint episodes to help you guys out, and so I can paint and shit. Um, chances are, Naren will show up. <laughs> um, I am a hammer bro now, apparently. You can, bro. Any, anyone can be a hammer, bro. It's just you gotta be, you gotta be able to have fun and play this game. But you too serious about it. Am I the hammer, bro? Like, oh well, there is technically not one hammer, bro. The hammer, bro, is like the whole. But if there like, is a YouTube hammer, bro, am I hello. the hammer? Bro? Yes. Okay, so I'm the hammer bro of YouTube. Uh, just to get that out there. Anyways, back to incentive points. Let's get let's get back on track. Um, so we already established if you follow each one of those three points, you get 50 incentive points, correct? Yes. Now, besides that, uh, on a show like this, a live hangout, we will do. Um, we'll have two co-hosts. Like you and someone else, like Malorian or something, and we will run over everyone's finished goals and decide based on a criteria that I wrote out how how well they finished their goal or how well this goal pushed them as an artist. So, um, like to explain it better, I'll actually have to read it. Freaking reading and stuff. It's like Nerd. the reading rainbow. I know, man. <laughs> Come I didn't, on. I didn't come into this hangout to read. Neither did the Baron, What's up with that? We're just. I thought we were hammer bros. Calling me a nerd. <laughs> you alpha <laughs> level Jedi. <laughs> okay. Um. Basically, it's gonna start up. Start out at five points. Five points is going to be the bare minimum. Like, um, basically, say, let's say I chose a Vargas to paint or something like that, or just, like, a unit of dogs. Okay. And I painted them, completed them, and they're done. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing you can say against that. That's a completed goal, and that was the goal that you wanted. So that's that would give you five more incentive points to whatever incentive points you've earned from the progression lead. And now, um, to add on top of that, 10 points would be awarded if you achieve that, as well as add in more volume, meaning like volume of models, 
So, like, if you did a whole unit of skeletons or if Naren finished all of his skaven, you know? So, like, I would get a trillion points because I painted 49 skaven slaves, 49 skaven slaves, 41 skaven slaves, 39 storm vermin. Depending on how well you did, <laughs> um, oh. which I, I will get to that in a bit, but... Um, fucking storm so vermin. If you completed it to tabletop ready, and you have um, not just more than one unit... Look at these motherfucking skaven. They look so fucking good. Look at that storm vermin. Dang, I'm gonna... He's fine. <laughs> I, I like the blue. I like the blue. So, um, where was I at? Where was I? Uh, you were talking about the point values and whatnot, and if you set goals and then get additional models with quantity. Okay, okay, yeah. So five points is you did the standard your standard goal, you achieved it, and you did the base level work. Ten points is, is if you did the same thing as uh, five points, but you have more models and more volume, like more volume model of models, and you started from start to finish, like mm -hmm. you went from gray to this, you know. Yep. Um, fi fifteen points would be a step up a notch. It shows that you had a goal in mind, like a full plan for your army, and it's cohesive looking, and it's based, and you started from gray to finish. And then it goes up from there, and you can get up to 30 points extra for incentive points based on this scale. But the thing is, this scale won't just be me and my cohorts. It's going to be the people from the PMP League. So after this hangout is over, we'll give you two days to put out your votes on what you think they should get as far as extra incentive points at the end. And um, we'll tally it, average it, and then add that to the ending uh, participation points. So technically you could have up to 80 uh, incentive points uh -huh. for one month. And if you do that, you're on the top of that month, and you're the top dog. And through that, basically what I'm trying to figure out is... Um, I'm going to be doing rewards for the people that have the most incentive points at a certain time limit, and I'm not sure where to cut it off. Um, I have three months, five months, or six months, and those are the things I have bouncing around in my head now, so I'll leave it to you guys. Even if you're not a part of the PMP League, give your opinion on that. Think, like, say... Well, three months is stupid. Why would you do that? Five months is stupid just to do six. Like, okay. I, I appreciate that. But anyways, at the end of these six, five, or three months, all of your points get erased and tallied, and you either become the winner, and there will be a first, third, and second place. And second place gets said in third place because no one cares about second place. But anyways... <laughs> Um, that's my idea for the Incentive League. I have a document posted, and I also posted it up on Google Hangouts, or Google Plus, at the PMP League site. So check that out. Give me your feedback, please, and let me know if this is something that you're okay with. I feel like it's a way to make it fair, and it, I feel like it's also a way to have people put their voice in that aren't necessarily taking part in the progression league itself, because we're gonna have people like Mitchum who just want to join in to have like some motivation to paint his stuff, which is fine. Like that's the kind of stuff we want. But his vote matters too. Like he'll vote at the end of the month, saying adding, saying what, how many points this guy should get. And um, so I feel like it gives you all a voice. I feel like it gives you a standard that you can all follow. And it's really easy to sum up. There's not very many ways you can confuse it up or confuddle it. So um, that's probably what I'm going to be doing. If you guys have any feedback or any other thoughts, give them to me, and I will listen because I want this to be an army of not just one, but an army of painters. That was the lamest thing I've said today. So, Naren, what are your thoughts? 
That sounds excellent. Do you I think was going to say that the point values could have been lower because you didn't use any 5s or 15s or anything, so I was like, why don't you just use 1s and 5s and 10s? That way you can cut down significantly on like the math involved. But then you were like, 5, and I'm like, shit! 0.5 makes things harder. <laughs> so, uh, no, I mean, like, it sounds good. I mean, I would say, like, whatever the people want. I mean, like, I, I don't need any motivation right now because my GT is in seven days. So I, so I need to finish these models in seven yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. And if I um, don't, then I'm bringing Broponia. Dude, didn't Anthony say he was going to run him over or something? Yeah, but the tournament organizer said I could, but I, I, I'm not bringing him anyway. Actually, I'm playing Anthony game one. I challenged him to a grudge match. Dude, run over his dwarves. I, Actually, I think dwarves are probably like the hardest matchup for Skaven. Um, I, I would agree with that. Um, probably honestly, I feel my like elves, elves and dwarves uh, have Skaven pretty well set up. Because especially with the gyrocopters and the flame cannons and... Crap. Well, he's not playing any flame cannons, and he's only playing two gyros. What's his list? I, I actually haven't checked it out. Uh, I'm, I am like a dwarf at heart, so I don't like new players. Until they show themselves. If, if he wins, then I'll be like, I love you, Anthony. I, I, I bring you in. I accept you as a dwarf, but... So what what is his new list? He's got like... 25, like, long beards with great weapons or something, I think, maybe shields, and then, like, 20 warriors with great weapons, and then, like, 27 hammers with uh, the five-up ward thing to all the units around him. Um, and uh, two cannons, two organ guns, and a uh, lobber thing. The grudge thrower? Yep. And, uh, um, yeah, two, 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 two of the... Gyrocopters. Hmm. For me, I feel like... I'm, I'm not saying this to badmouth this list automatically. I'm not trying to do that. Like, I'm, I'm legitimately assessing it. But it doesn't seem like it has enough of an, any particular thing. It's kind of like a toolbox thing he's going for. That or just trying to... War machine the hell out of everyone <laughs> and just charge them with the hammers when they get close. Well, I think he's got. Um, I think it's it's also because he dropped his empire and they all exploded, so he didn't have anything to play. But he bought that like new dwarf army that was like almost fully painted, so like all he had to do was like paint a cannon. No, okay. So I, so I think that's why he's playing it. Um, I I guess for me, um, you said twenty seven. Uh, dwarves, twenty-seven hammers, right? Yeah. Um, do it, what runes did they have? Uh, the one that gives like everything within like twelve inches the four abort or five abort save, so like shooting okay, and that's cool. something. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so he's gonna basically castle and shoot. Yep. Um, like with war machines, I, uh, I hope he does well. But um, I have. A feeling that he doesn't have enough of it's uh, he, he doesn't have enough of a certain thing to actually pull through those big wins, you know. Right. Um, and being what what kind of tournament is it? What, like, give me the lowdown on how they they score. Uh, honestly, I don't know. It's uh, it's twenty one. I mean, it's the twenty nil system. Um, 20 kill system. Yeah. So, so I could like, see him. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I could see him having some bad luck, and uh, especially since he's prone to bad luck and using more machine army. It's like it's just a bad idea. <laughs> well, I got, a, I got, I got, a, you know, I got a couple, I got a couple secret strats that I can't discuss here because you know I'm sure that I'm sure he's watching the channel trying to get some tips. Oh, yeah, I'm, I bet he's watching this right now. He's like, oh. fucking whoopee. I gave him PDFs and everything, and he's shit-talking my dwarves. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm not shit-talking him. I'm just being fucking so, rumbler. Um, so, <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to, like... Yeah, like, I'm a little nervous, but... Um, um, the biggest... So he has 27 hammers. That's that's a pretty strong unit. And his, his 
Is he placing his lords in there? Yeah. Okay, and then I heard that he couldn't have more than 600 points, so he had to lessen that down a bit. Yeah, that's why it's like 27, I think. It's you like know... 500-point unit cap. Or five, yeah, 500 points. How much is the... How much is the point army? Like, how many points is the army? 25. 2,500? Yes. Man, uh, I would have went for volume. Volume and, uh, honestly, like, some kind of way that you can get the points you need. On a, I feel like dwarves in volume, uh, like, just non-longbeards, when they're ranked up, they're so good at breaking steadfast. And if you load it up with gyrocopters to move around and just intercept or even chase them down or hit the flanks, it becomes really, 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 really nice. Um, I like his hammer unit, and I do like uh, long beards, but I think he should have chose between them. I think he should have either went with more long beards or more hammers. I, I don't think that it's a good idea to try to mix your points between the two, you know? Maybe right. have two units of hammers if you can have 600. But um, I get his list. It's a it's a solid list, and I hope he does well with it. It just it just makes me wonder like what I would change or what I would do. I got a couple. I got a couple secret strats. So, you know, I'm uh, I'm feeling okay about it. I mean, it really comes down to if my doom rocket hits, and then if I can force straight at 13 through. Because <laughs> like I mean, if I hit the hammer unit, um, let's be real. I'm gonna kill like. Twelve hammers. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I need to roll like a fifteen. I'm gonna try to thirteen. My whole thing is, um, I've been running a lot of dwarf armies without uh, artillery, and if I do, it's um, grudge throwers or cannons, and I always try to bring the freaking flame cannon. See, um, Anthony's under the assumption that the. Uh, the volley gun or whatever is like the best. And I mean, I actually think the flame cannon is the best, man. I don't, I don't, um, I don't think since it's been nerfed that it's at the level that it needs to be to get rid of the numbers. Well, whoopee. I don't, I don't know dwarfs. So you know what? This is a good chance for me to learn something. So my assumption, and I could be wrong. You can correct me if I am. Um, I will. They're uh, they're grudge <laughs> or the the volley gun, whatever it's called. Um, yeah, the organ gun. The organ gun. Uh, it's two D or two uh, two artilleries, right? Yeah. And its ballistic skill is the ballistic skill of either the engineer or the shooter. Yeah, the it'll be the engineer because I know he's got one of those. So that's so like it's what? not going to be any more than I hate. The ballistic skill of dwarves, it doesn't make sense. It's all bullshit. But it's always going to be three, and if you get lucky, it's going to be four. So, like, realistically, the volumes of hits are your only option to get any wounds. Like, though, all those artillery dice you're rolling is the only way you're going to get wounds through. Now, I do agree that um, organ guns, with a army type type like his that has just three big units um, can be very beneficial against things like Skaven because um, otherwise you don't have anything to dwindle down the numbers of those huge blocks and you just get stuck in uh, combat all day, you know? Right. So I couldn't see that. But me personally, I don't like the Orkin guns as much as I used to. I know someone's going to, like, Sneak into my house and castrate me for saying that, but oh, oh my! <laughs> don't don't I'm, castrate I'm, me. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big big fan. All right, you guys. Um, the grudge throwers are fun. I love them. I like I like the cannons. I I don't use very many of them because I'm one of those people whose Murphy's Law says I'm always going to explode. And right. to this day. I've never taken every game. I love the flame cannon, but every game I've ever taken it, it's exploded. First shot. No, uh, it, since I've played Dwarves, started back in the beginning and end of 6th edition, like I started at the end of 6th edition and the beginning of 7th, 
Mm-hmm. I've been using the flame cannon. It sucked ass in that edition, but I thought it was cool. Just the thought of like freaking a giant ball of flame. It, it, it was actually usable at that time. Eighth good. edition comes. It's usable, but it still fucking explodes every time. Every time. I'll just yeah. be like, oh, look, here's a bunch of elves. They're toughness three. I'm going to flame them. Explode. Oh, here's here's some more elves. I'm going to flame them. Uh, explode. No, you like, can't I don't even... re-roll that, right, with the rune of re-roll? Like, oh. the rune of re-rolling doesn't work if you supercharge. Well, it doesn't matter. He's not playing flame cannon, so. Um, to be honest, I am old school, so I don't know if you can put runes on the flame cannon or not. If that is true, I'm going to do that. Actually, let me look that up right now because, fuck, I cannot not know this once I... Oh, I'm all alone. Hi, everybody. So, yeah, I'm just being easy. Like, I'm going kind of crazy. There's so many of them. Literally infinite scale. Ugh. I'm watching hockey. I'm sorry, this breath's probably boring. If you're watching right now, you probably want to skip ahead a little bit. Oh, that Nair guy sucks at running a channel. What's up? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I have the Book of Tome. Let's see here. The Book of Grudges. I'll try my worst freaking Sean Connery accent. Well, so you, said, you said Nixon earlier. Yeah. That sounded like Sean Connery. <laughs> um, uh, honestly, if you ever get bored and you want something to do with your girlfriend... Besides sex, uh, watch League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Listen to Sean Connery talk for a bit. Go down the alphabet and just say it the word like that sound and try to make it sound like Sean Connery. Like start with A, like apples, bananas, and <laughs> candy canes. It turns out that like Sean Connery has a shush. Like, he says his S's with the shh. It's, it's pretty fun. Fun times. Well, slap my ass and call me Shelly. I don't know. I don't talk like Sean Connery very well, honestly. Well, that's, that's, that's good that you don't try, then. No, it sucks. I wish I could. Um, for me, I, I am so hyperactive and shit that I am willing to embarrass myself for laugh, so I don't really care. <laughs> That's okay. You can talk like Sean Connery, and uh, and uh, I will uh, I will talk like uh, like this. Oh man, when I worked out, I guess I could do, I, or I could just do Christopher Walken. Oh, wa- wow. <laughs> can you actually do it? Can you actually do it? Can you do more than one? Because every time I tried Christopher Walken, it turns into freaking like um. What's his face from Greece? Uh, Danny Zuko. Nah. Um, oh he man, was... I didn't, I didn't know a character from Greece. Oh my gosh, it's the only one that I know. It's uh, he named his son Jet. If that gives you any hint. I don't know. The secret to walking though is just like, you just emphasize like the wrong part of the word. So like. Okay. Hey, You've seen Pulp Fiction, right? Yeah. The guy who takes uh, Uma Thurman out on a date, like, oh my god, wow, like, totally, this is crazy. Yeah, it's Danny Zuko. Um, anyways, yeah, 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 going by his fictional name. <laughs> right, right, and John Travolta. Uh, yeah, yeah, John Travolta. Uh, for those of you who did not know that. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'll go into a Christopher Walken, and I'll be like, my soup, you'll scare me. Because the fast, 
and it'll just all of a sudden just go into like a freaking John Travolta voice, and it's this weird like hybrid of both that, that should not be existing. Yeah, it's a little hard to do walking. Okay, give me some walking while I read the book of grudges, so I don't feel like a reread. No, it's like it's hard to do. Like it's like you know like a. It's it's just not easy because because you got you have to uh, you have to talk like uh, see that's the thing like see you can slip it up and then like you know uh, going to Bosnia. I noticed <laughs> I noticed your book. Your book has it has, it has three pages. What happened? The book on the book on your table. It has three pages. It obviously is made for five. How did that? Ha st I'm still yeah, going see? to. <laughs> but that was good though. Like you had it though for a little bit. No, I just do a little while. Um, Wow. <laughs> wow. See, I I'm, I can only do Sean Connery. Seems like we have a bit of a difficult situation here. Yeah, that's pretty good, though. It's just the S's, man. Like, I do a bum cover. That is album cover. I could reach for back. Or, I'll take the penis is mightier for 500. That's that is the pen the is mightier. mightier. <laughs> well, don't fluff it, Trebek. I just want to know if it truly works. <laughs> uh, those are some some great quotes. Great quotes. Okay, so um, fill the air while I read this to make sure that they don't have like the. Did they get rid of the rune where you can't add to new equipment, or like that whole rule? Mm, I have no idea. Because in the old book, they were, the dwarves were so stubborn, they're like, no way are we going to put magical runes on a giant flaming cannon. No, they do <laughs> that. You can do that now. Okay. Uh -huh. Like, I think the organ has, like, hits on twos, because you can put, like, the rune of accuracy on it or whatever. Okay. So, like, so it I can... hits on twos, but then, like, you know, long range. Does it suffer from multi-shot? Um... Let me check the stat real quick. I'm looking at the engineer runes. No, I don't think it does. No, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it's so a war gonna, machine. So he's going to be hitting on like threes or whatever. Probably, because he's probably going to be at long range, because he's got 24 inch range, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, so um, he's going to be hitting on threes most of the time. See, ideally, that kicks ass. Um, but you have a 15 point, it's only 15 points, and on your organ thrower, or your organ gun, let's, let's do some thinking here. So 120, that brings it up to a 135 point item. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, man. It's... I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. Um, if I can use the rune to re-roll, though, on my flame cannon, I am going to do a battle report tomorrow, and that's legitimately what I'm just, just going to do. Uh, just, just to see if, like, finally I can use it. It's a pretty um, I, know, I think you can. <laughs> But for me, I started uh, in eighth edition. I started finding that more. Um, I like the castling idea that he has, but I also started finding that more um, precise units with a specific role in the castle. Like you need to know which role these lords are going to play and why they're there, and it needs to be very specific for each level if you want it to be as successful as you need it to be. You know, just because um, they kick ass, but realistically, you aren't going to be running out with movement three hammers towards the unit, you, towards the enemy army, you know? Right. And um, if, if you're castling, you're not going to be bringing back up with your hammers towards the, ar the rest of the army either, right? So... It's one of those things you have to like pick and choose what you want to do. Like if you have hammers, I feel like you have to organize your army to be more aggressive so you can get the hammers up there into battle. Or 
figure out a way to make them come to you where they can't stay back. But the thing is, with dwarves the way they are now, they're not as survivable against magic, so that makes that a little bit harder. But well, he's running one spellbreaker to like that, like can eat the spell, and then um, a second dispel scroll. Yeah, so, that sounds about right. So I mean, right. he'll he'll be able to. I mean, so you but know, it sounds like it sounds awesome, and it is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But you also you always have those moments where they roll fucking double sixes, and you just you 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 kind of just like pee yourself a little bit because um, all the level six spells are usually not good for the dwarves. Uh, like oh, yeah. anything with initiative tests will murder them. It's just. It's horrifying. <laughs> I can't talk too much about my strat because I don't want Anthony. I don't want Anthony learning all my crazy gypsy secrets. But I got a couple ideas that I hope will work. And if not, you know, then I'll just um, have the moves. Have you have you seen anyone use the gyro bomb on me yet? No. Because I was thinking, um, if you are using, if you're using hammers, and um, I would use long bricks of... I'd probably use a long brick of warriors, because warriors are better than people give them credit for, I feel like. And if not warriors, at least um, quarrelers. And I'd use the gyro bombers and have at least either two cannons or two grudge throwers, so oh. that would force them to move forward, you know? Right. Um, and a gyrocopter just for chaff and moving things around. And I feel like that would be a good way to move them forward without having a vanguard army. I don't know, I'm just fucking list building now, but talking out of my ass. Realistically, you could have a unit of 40 miners come up out of the back and <laughs> have six gyrocopters and two bombers. Or actually, not the bombers at that point, but yeah, you know what I mean. It's I, I'm just list building. That, yeah. It's hard for me to look at that book and not just start like thinking of ideas like, oh, this is cool, this is cute. Oh, I haven't tried this before. But, I don't know. Have you played them very much? Do you have much experience with them? I feel I've like... Played them once or twice. I mean, I, know, I understand the entire concept of the list. I mean, <laughs> shoot me as I come to you and kill me. Oh, by the way, the first time ever in any broadcast, that was the first time I ever took my hat off. Oh, jeez. You should feel special. That's Anyways, you, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I got, I got tools with which to work. Um, I guess the only thing I'm curious about is how afraid of the organ guns I actually should be. Um, how, big are, how many units of slaves are you bringing again? Three. And they're all above 50? 49. So 49... Dude, I mean, what are they... He has two? Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like if... I don't... Do you, you don't have lightning cannons, do you? Or am I thinking I of... Two lightning cannons. See... I think you'll have the utilities to take those away, and once those get taken away, it's just going to become a stale match or a stale grind. Well, the thing is, I think the way I'm seeing it, my, I think my 39 storm vermin with my warlord beat up any of his units. I don't know, man. Um, I wouldn't underestimate the new shield wall uh, ability. It, kick, it it really does kick ass because I mean. They're toughness four, well, that's whatever, but that's actually a pretty good boost. And then, um, not only that, they're getting plus one to their armor save and plus one to the parry. They're going to survive like a motherfucker. And Here's the thing, though. Rats. Think, the thing is, though, that I, in, if everything goes according to plan, which it should, I mean, you should have a, a very small brick left. 
because Skaven are kind of, you know, really good at killing infantry. Yeah. With All right, at least combat. Overwhelming. I mean, like, you know, like, see, it's going to come down to, well, did I get Dreaded 13th off? Because, like, if I Dreaded 13th off his big unit of hammers, I mean, you, you figure one good warp lightning cannon shot is going to kill... Twelve hammers. Let's say I, let's say I kill like six or seven, and then I pop a doom rocket on it. You know, then I'm definitely killing like twelve guys. Then I, I need, then I need to roll like a dozen on my Dread of Thirteen spell to literally wipe the whole unit with all of his characters and stuff. That's one of my things too. Um, like I was saying before, he doesn't have enough of the tools he needs besides the organ guns. To he, I feel like he's a very spread out. Dwarf army for it, the amount of points he had. I feel like if he cut out of cut the um, hammers out and maybe focused on more um, utility units at least or something because twenty seven hammers are gonna die really fast. I feel like. Um, oh well, so that's the other thing too. Like I said, like if I hit him with my storm vermin, like God forbid I have death frenzy up on him. You know what I mean? Because like, yeah. cause like sure, like you know, let's say. Let's say I take it slow, and I give him the slow ride, and I'm like, oh, two or three dice scorch. All right, well, you're not throwing a dispel scroll at that. You, you probably have to throw all your dice at it, because I got, you know, the plus two bonus on you or whatever. So now yeah. do you let scorch off? Okay, well, now I'm dropping, you know, the big strength for the little strength for template on your dudes. All right, See, well, now are you going to dispel my death frenzy? Because now I'm going to have death frenzy with, like, two or three dice. Well, are you, I mean, like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's going to have to choose, like... Um, am I going to let, you know, two or three little spells go off every turn or stop one and, you know, get one off or uh, and, and save my scrolls for the 13th that might not come until I six it, you know what I mean? I'm going to be honest. I think the ETC setup kind yeah. of castrated him in this um, match a little bit. Oh, there's no I, ETC. It's no ETC? I thought there was, like, a point limit on your... Oh, oh. yeah, well, I mean, there's that, but I mean... What is that? Like, then I'm ignorant. Well, that's I'm sorry. Just, I think it's just a comp thing. I mean, I, I guess they do do it in the ETC, but I didn't. But I guess I was. I guess I was assuming that you were talking about Crossroads because one of the big tournaments up here uh, actually went to straight ETC. Uh, okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. But um, no, I, the thing because uh, what I was getting at is a unit of twenty-seven hammers doesn't do much, what it needs to do, and it's not. Uh, there's not enough people there to survive what it needs to survive to do what it needs to do. You know what I mean? Right. Well, and, yeah, um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, like, shit, 27 hammer. 20 it was only got like 27 and 26 in each unit. So like, that's and fun, why wouldn't you just? Um, I guess at my point, I would have probably tossed the long beards and made them into nor either quarrelers or just a brick of dwarves to either negate people steadfast or something, or, you know, even do something crazy, put a bomber in there. You need something that's going to be able to do what it does without needing that many people, because at least if you have the dwarf warriors, you can have a substantial unit before it gets to 500, you know, right? Oh, and um, that they're, they're strong. They're strong when they're ranked up, really strong. But... Um, he wanted the Killy, but when you have two Killy units that aren't at full potential, it's like you have two half-cocked guns aimed at someone that has first draw on you, you know? Especially with the dwarves. So, um, honestly, I feel like he can take out his uh, organ guns. If, the, if those don't fail, um, you have a very good chance, or a higher chance to win. But, again, it's Warhammer. Um, I will root for Anthony this time. I did not root for him at Brawler's Bash. I underwhelmed him, and I am going to choose to go with him on this. Um, it's just going to be a tough win. And if he wins, uh, t hats off to him, you know. But um, I, I think he's kind of uh, how you say starting with his feet in the mud. Kind of thing. Wow. Wow. The feet are stuck in the mud. It's it's like I'm back in Germany. <laughs> God, that was terrible. 
I don't I don't know. Like I mean, it'll be I think it'll be a fun game. And like I, I grudge match him just because like we've, I've never played him, and oh, you know, I've, and I watch his channel all the time. So I'm like, oh, well, I would like to play Anthony since like you know I'm going to. I believe the tournament is like at his localist game store, so or it's put on by his localist game store. It's in Philly. But yeah, so I thought it'd be fun. And you know, so, he's got this book of grudges, and I want my name in it. We need to play each other. I've come to this conclusion. Um, there's a lot of similarities between us, and I was explaining it to my girlfriend. Um, you remember how you first stated when we first did a video? You listened to it because you liked to hear like the playback. I used to do the same thing, and like Nick and Tyler thought I was weird for that. Mm -hmm. And now, not only that, we got the long hair and kind of hippie groove going on. We both had the goalies in the hockey that brought us into the game. Um, we both had separate addictions to MMMOs. We're both into Warhammer. Uh, let's see. Your favorite movie ever is Old Boy, and my yeah. favorite movie ever was Old Boy. And I've never known anyone to state that ever, the Korean version, before you. And, like, to, I was just, like, legitimately, like, taken back. I'm like, whoa, what the heck? You're like, you're like my freakish doppelganger. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, your, I'm your East Coast doppelganger. Yes. <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, I might be too giggly, though. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. I uh, I can't I can't lose this game. In fact, I have to I have to do very well at this GT because I don't know if you if you saw the trash talking between Skaven Az and I. No, no, um, I didn't. I was talking some good shit to him. Well, actually, he was talking good shit to me. He's like, "Your list is the same as my list. You you have the same list as me." And I'm like, "No, I don't. What are you talking about?" He's like, "They're basically the same. Like we have the same rare section because we're playing Skaven. Like, let's be honest." Um, and then yeah. I was like, I was like, our warlords are built completely different. You play the Fellblade, and I don't. Uh, my Gracier is built completely different. I have, <laughs> I have Power Scroll and Skalm and Talisman of Endurance. Like you don't have, you have like Talisman of Preservation and like other items. I'm like, my uh, ASB has Storm Banner. Yours has Flaming Banner. Like, dude, are this aren't the same at all? I am gonna go off the chart here and give some love to one of my old co-hosts and say that I think that Nick brought the single most unique Skaven army to a tournament. Like, as far as he didn't bring any... He just brought a huge unit of Storm Vermin. He didn't have any Warp Lighting cannons. Um, he had two Hell Pits and then a bunch of other shenanigans that you normally don't see. He just cut the block, and he did really well with it. And I... I don't mean to interrupt your story or anything. You just reminded me of that. And I know he's probably not going to watch this, but one day, like maybe when he's 40, he's going to be like, that Dylan character wasn't so bad. <laughs> I, uh, well, he's, he's, so he might be there. I don't know. He might like day trip on Saturday. So I might see him. Tell um, him. Tell him that Whoopi Womp misses him and um, that so I'm weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be weird? Just no. be... So it's a couple Don't say each other. it's from me. Don't say it's from me. Just say it. Just be like, dude, I miss you. I totally miss you. And then hold your arms out. See, but, but then it is weird because I'm standing right in front of him. Yeah. And it's like yeah, the first but... time I met the guy, so now you're making it weird for me. <laughs> now you're transferring your creep revive onto him onto me dude, right to him, dude. and that's not All acceptable. Right. Alright, man. Just work with me for a second here, okay? Just just hug the man and see how it goes, and and it, it will work. It's 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 like the force persuasion. It, it it will happen. He'll know. He's like, oh, this is Whoopi Wall. <laughs> I'll be somewhere with a twinkle in my eye and a corn cob pipe, looking towards the sunset. Uh, these things don't happen in real life. <laughs> they don't. Yeah, can't we say it though? I mean, is it, is it not allowed? No, it's not. So anyway, moving on. Oh, that's cold. Um, <laughs> we were talking Dude, uh, some good shit back and forth, and uh, we ended up making a bet. Well, I ended up making a bet with him, and he accepted. So he's going to the Alamo like soon, 
And uh, I'm like, listen, I will place higher at Sylvania than you will place at the Lone Wolf. And he's like, you're on. And I'm like, if I win, you have to wear a My Little Pony t-shirt during three of your broadcasts, minimum. And if you win, then I will have to wear a Boston Red Sox jersey for a minimum of three of mine if he accepted my terms. Here's the um, problem with it, though. Does he show himself in his Scandinavian videos? So well, I think we have to bring him on our show. I think that should be the stipulation that he has to come on three shows wearing the My Little Pony. I'm going to assume that, that he's going to be a good sport about it. So he will yeah. be better. Yeah. yeah, Because, I mean, he has to be seen wearing it, you know? Like, oh, he's going to be seen, don't you worry. Because um, he's not going to do better than I am with his own Skaven list. Man. Um... So, do you want to hear the worst list ever? Tell me the worst list ever. I was playing a new guy, and I decided to go easy on him. Oh. And so, this is the list I took. I took, like, the basis of my Marauder list. I had 45 Marauders with, with great weapons, and um, I had my BSB in there with the Banner of Hatred. Because you don't are the banner frenzy because you don't want them to lose that. that that's the only thing that makes it good. And um, I had a slaughter brute, but I connected it to my sorcerer lord um, on on a demonic on um, a slanesh steed uh -huh. and a unit of five, right? And he has I I was gonna go with Laura Shadow, but I'm like no fuck it. Dude, I am going with Slanesh. So I got uh, Cacophonic, and that was it. But by the end of this... because He was playing Demons, so out, out of three of the Rolls of Chaos, somehow my guy's brain melted and he turned into a Nurgle. <laughs> like, uh, just, it's just like, how does that happen? Anyways, so that's bad enough. Um... My freaking uh, my beast goes crazy, just goes off the shitter, starts destroys my gore beast chariot, and then all I have left is just a giant unit of freaking <laughs> marauders killing blood letters, and I there's nothing I can say about it. Because I straight up was like, I want to try to win with one of the worst lists I can b build just to see if, like, strategy can overcome this, but... Uh, this might be the most disappointing model ever because it looks so sweet and it has such a sweet name, and then you see what it does and you're like, this thing is legitimately just awful. Oh, yeah, and, like, I normally um, go with Fencer Blades on my... My guy on the Slanish Steed, so I was like, okay, he has weapon skill 10. This is going to be awesome. And um, the first thing I did is charge into the flank of a um, Nurgle Beast because I'm like, oh, I'll just break him, move on to the Blood Letters, and then I'll be able to double team them with the, <laughs> the freaking um, Marauders and the Slaughter Brute. But I forgot about the Slime Trail, so he just gets stuck there. And freaking his demon brisk goes in and slaughters it, and then uh, it's just it was a shit show. I have never lost so bad in my life. It it was like one of those moments where I'm just like, okay, okay, I needed this. <laughs> what is your what is your worst loss? So that's your worst loss. Absolutely, my worst loss because um, the only thing I gained from it is I killed a unit of blood letters with my Marauders, which made me feel happy as hell. I'm just like, because they were marked to corn and they were fighting corn. it just felt good. Felt good. But realistically, I didn't get any points. And he gained points because he got a freaking Herald of Nurgle out of my freaking level 4 caster that I spent so many points in to try to do something special because of the fucking Book of rain of shit on you if your wars and chaos and demons or anything else. Ah. Sorry, that was my moment of just like frustration with that. 
the whole reign of chaos. But realistically, my my list sucked, and I knew it. But I didn't think it would lose that bad. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It happens. What? My worst loss is probably at Crossroads when Game 5 when I voided Manfred on turn 1. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, when you when you um, sucked him into the warp? Yup, turn 1. I'm like, I'm going to 3 dice Van Hels. Miscast, <laughs> cool, whatever. Oh, into the warp. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. Oh. Yeah. Uh, honestly, um, besides that, I normally don't take lists like that. He was a new player. I just wanted... I didn't... He had an MSU Demon army, and I didn't think it was very hard. And so I was kind of playing just like, ah, it's like a video game. I don't care. But at the end of it, I'm like, man, I played that really stupid, and that was a really bad list. Have you ever had any games like that? Where you're just like, man, what was I thinking? Yep, that list. Was fucking that list. Well, no, not with the list. Never really had a. Our well, strategy. I'm sure I've had bad lists, but like I've never, I think I've ever really screwed them, or I've never had a terrible list. But oh well, no, that's not true. I played a. I played an all corn Warriors of Chaos army, and I won a tournament with it. it was awesome. Corn Demon Prince for the win. Yeah. Um, but no, my worst, uh, my worst fucking game was probably the battle report I just posted. Oh, it was against the Empire, and I played. I just played so terribly. I haven't like, watched it. Yeah. yeah, I like posted it right before this. It was terrible. I was so disappointed in myself. It's kind of, it's kind of like a ball breaker because you see those moments where you're just like, dude, why did I do that? Where like I, like I, like you know, I'm not trying to like, you know, be like oh, super great at Warhammer, but like I usually see the board pretty well, and like I got flank charged by some demigurfs, and I just it literally blew my mind. Like I stood there for a second, and I'm like, oh wow, I didn't even remote. Like it never crossed my mind that that could happen. You know, the last time that happened to me, a bunch of dogs ran into my flank, <laughs> and I was a dwarf gyrocopter, and these dogs proceeded. To devour this gyrocopter, <laughs> and, and I, I, I feel you honestly. Like, um, I don't think anyone has complete control of the board at all, at all times, but for the most part, you know where things are. But the the focus can be so moved towards one side that you completely forget about stuff like that, like little things like that. And it doesn't happen often, but I can see it happening a lot in GTs. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. For me, I just have you ever heard of dogs killing anything? Yeah, they can kill war machines. But like a gyrocopter? gyrocopter I'm not gonna let driver. this die. I'm not gonna let this die. I. I I will forever mention this as the dwarfy part of me in the one battle that I had with Nick. That's okay. That is... <laughs> I got I got the best. I got the best. No bullshit. You ready for this one? Yeah. Uh so my buddy's playing the lizard man. Uh doesn't see that my spirit host can see him. Well he does, but he doesn't know that the spirit host can go through walls. So I charge him through a wall. And I hit him with my spirit host. I slip a wound through. Uh, he doesn't do any wounds to me. Uh, he's got BSB, so he loses by one, fails his cold blooded twice, and I run the salon down with my spirit host on like turn two. Oh my gosh, that would suck. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Oh, that, that had to have felt good, though. Like, Oh, man. My buddy's really, really super unlucky. He was the one that was on here the first night on this channel. He's he's basically... His nickname on our team is Murphy's, uh, that's why Murphy's Law. Yeah. Okay, okay, I gotcha. He's, I gotcha. He's like a superhero when it comes to rolling sugar. Dude, I swear, like, for me, um, I feel like there's something about the whole, like, mental state you go in when you roll that affects your role. I don't know if I'm superstitious or if this is just bullshit, but don't you feel like you know when you're going to roll bad and you know when you're going to make the roll? 
No. So I mean, in some cases, sometimes, very rarely. But that's usually uh, just bravado. Uh, okay. I mean, Maybe I, don't, you... <laughs> I mean, like, you know, sometimes, but like, man... I'm just a superstitious Norseman, man. It's it is the way it is. <laughs> it can happen. I mean, like superstition can be a thing. Like I, well, I I totally believe in positive vibes, and I totally yeah. believe in like um, negative vibes. And I think if you, there's rolling definitely has something to do with that. That would explain how I won the GT. Oh, dude, seriously. Like if you're on top of the world and you're playing, you you just kick ass. I, I can't explain it, but every time I play my brother, anyone else I roll pretty well against besides my flame cannon. And um, my brother, with his high elves, will just roll insane crap. Just insane crap that can't happen, and stuff that shouldn't happen to me does. And, like, an example of the last game we played is I had my Nurgle Demon Prince and a unit of... 26 um, marauders that just got done killing his unit of 25 uh, white lions. Mm. To his um, his sea guard, and I'm like, oh, might as well just roll fleshy abundance on him. Fuck it, let's do it. So I I I, I six dice it because I go big or go home basically. Clearly, and I get sucked into a warp. So my demon prince dies. <laughs> Freaking the marauders get, get cut down like dogs in the street and ran down. And then um, the most amazing surviving act I've ever seen. I killed my brother's star dragon in the beginning with my chaos lord, mm -hmm. and I chased him down on while he was on foot running away. With my Gore Beast Chariot, I got the charge on him and everything. And this was at turn three. And he survived three turns against a Gore Beast Chariot with one wound left. And just <laughs> holding all of these points. It's just like, oh, how do you do this? How do you do this? That's impressive. Can't argue with that. Ah, I, I mean, I didn't. Even, I was flabbergasted. Honestly, I was laughing the whole time because that the fact that that was even happening is just so ridiculous. It's just like, gosh, why would he die? He's like Spider Man. What the hell? But um, I'd say that's probably the weirdest dice rolls I've had. I can't. I can't hate on that. Can't hate on that. Um. Yeah, this is where we're exchanging weird dice rolls. Let's get a feature going real quick. Let's do the five things we take in our armies just because we would like them. I don't. I only take incredibly competitive things. I don't take things I like. I hate everything. Man, you just no. shit all uh, over the way I, I play. <laughs> no, uh, I would. I guess my my favorite unit in Warriors is Skullcrushers. So like, I mean, like that's like not. Like a not that's like an incredibly competitive choice, yeah, but like, I mean, right? But like I mean, like in that in that army though, like I think skull crushers are like the coolest looking models, like so that's what I take. I, I guess that would be the thing that I take. Okay. Because like there's not like really like a bad choice in the warrior book either. I mean, like I don't like marauders. I, I mean, like marauders. I guess my choice would be chaos warriors, because no one plays them, but they're sweet. Um, my whole thing is, like, the reason I play Marauders instead of Chaos Warriors is because two Marauders equals one Chaos Warrior, and the damage output when they have flails or great weapons can be the same. And when you're walking up into Hailfire, the more volume of bodies, I feel like, does better. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. And I also feel like Warriors of Chaos have trouble with Steadfast, and when you have a bunch of naked Zinch... <laughs> marked uh, Marauders and ranked in file going in. It's it's nice to have that that like little backup. But anyways, continue what you were saying. Oh, uh, and then I guess I don't know in vampire counts. 
I mean, I've taken the black coach a couple times. That's a not very popular choice. I just think it's a cool looking model. It's a great looking model, and it like it, it reads so well. I don't understand why it doesn't do as well as it should. To be honest, like when you read its stats, it's like this is a kick ass chariot. But Every game I've played it, it does, it does okay. I mean, I like that model. Is it model. just because it takes so long to build up? And with Undead, that's not really... You can't afford that, or what? No, I've never really had a problem with it, like I said, because like I play, I mean, like, you know, if you play, like, Manfred, too, especially, you're, you know, getting big phases, usually, because you have that whole Master of the Black Arts thing where you can reroll one of the Winds of Magic dice. Yeah, true. So, true. you know, I mean, and you usually play, I usually play, like, three casters, so, you know, good channels and stuff, so, I mean... Every time I played it, it charges up pretty alright. I mean, you just got to be careful like anything else that's undead. Like you can't, you can't charge it into something and then be like, oh yeah, they're fighting zombies. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. 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 Oh. Um, to be honest, I never, I I hate zombies. I, I, I don't like the. I have never used them. I I use them for raise the dead for chaff, but I've never brought like a unit of zombie. I. The first time I ever played uh, Vampire Counts, I did, and they lost terribly. Like, it wasn't even funny, and I think it was like a unit to five knights, and that's back. It's like during the beginning of 8th edition when knights weren't the shit, you know? So, um, and I had a large unit. It was a substantial unit. It was, there was at least 50 in there. And they just died really bad. It... it and I don't know. I, I just I don't believe in zombies. I guess. I love zombies. What do you think the keys to success for zombies are? Like, Big tell bugs. me what I'm not doing because I feel like I'm doing what they should be doing. It just they always fail for me. Big bosses of zombies, and then they just die. That's their job. They just hold stuff up. Well, your blunder vampire goes and kills everything. Your terror guess. Okay. I mean, that's okay. how I always use them, just like, they're like slaves. Smash okay. them into something and hold them up. See, I guess I play um, more skellies, because I like, um, I like using the synergies between everything. Like, I played Graveguards and Graveguard and Skellies in the beginning of 8th edition, you know, that whole fun. Um, that with Six uh, Vargeist, a Vargolf, and a uh, three uh, Cryptors. That was like my standard build that I would want. I hate Vargeist. They're fucking terrible. Dude, um, to be honest, I didn't realize, I didn't think about it until um, one game this guy's like, they have Frenzy. And I'm like, yeah? Oh, Fudge, <laughs> like it. It's so bad. Like the fact that they can frenzy charge twenty uh, inches is the worst part of them. But to be honest, I really like having them because they're a fast unit. And um, once I started getting uh, like into the groove with my vampire counts, I ended up doing a. Night bus with a blender lord, and then I had a flying um, vampire that would go from skeleton unit to the skeleton unit, and he had that leadership drop thing. Mm -hmm. Each one of my skeleton units had a banshee in it so that they could scream, and the leadership drop would just help them kill crap. So I had that, and the var guys when they went up the flank with that bus, just kicked so much ass. If you hit something that has low initiative, they really, really, really do well. So um, my problem with it is like, okay, so it's the magic phase. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to magic missile your bar dice. Well, I can stop this magic missile and fuck myself or whatever spell is going to fuck my black knights or whatever I actually give a shit about. So I guess it goes off. Oh, God, toughness four, no saves. You killed three bar guys. <laughs> shit. Um... Okay, valid point, and I agree with that. I hate the fact that they have no saves. Um, so, like every time I use them, that's a, that's what happens. Well, I'm gonna shoot my archers at your varkais. Uh, okay. Have you ever used hex rays? Have you ever used hex rays? 
No, my buddy got nothing, a for dude. my birthday though, so I gotta build them because I want to. Nothing play. directs magic and just aggravation like hex rays. Seriously, like if you have ten or five in there, they won't even see the var guys. They'll just be looking at those hex rays, like they will. You. And I'll use it to my advantage all the time because. It's like, okay, they're going to go for the hex rates the first turn. And then even if I do get hit with something, by that time I'm going to be in combat or behind their lines doing what I need to do. And um, that's always what ended up happening for me. So I always had good success for them. And I ran them in units of six so they could absorb the wounds. Um, I only have three, so, you know, there's that. It's just different ways of playing. <laughs> oh, no. If I, they're probably better in units of six just because, you know, oh, I lost, you know, five wounds. Well, I'm still, you know, getting all these attacks. Um, the, yeah, the big problem is uh, I'm learning is just how strength five doesn't do shit. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the other thing. You're paying 40-plus points a model, and for, like, another... Ten points, you could have a fucking demigriff. Oh. <laughs> Ow. Wait, demigriff? Wait, what? In the Empire Army? Or what did you say? Like, yeah, for like ten more points, in theory, you could just take a demigriff. Like, yeah, so if, like, we don't have that choice, all right? So we like, don't like, have chocobo riders down in, in Sylvania in our but, undead lands. <laughs> but for eight less points, you could take a fucking Cryptor. And Cryptors um, are so much better. I feel like um, I love Cryptors. I play them both because Cryptors and the fact of their utility and defense are amazing. It's You just can't argue that. I mean, they can still they can still fuck some shit up, too. I mean, Poison's yeah, no, straight forward. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Um, and I, the thing is, though, I feel like you can run them in... Uh, I guess if you're more competitive, I, I play a lot of, uh, like, I, I play strategically and competitively, but I don't build, like, skew lists very often, besides my one freak army with a horde of Forsaken. That's just its own freak concoction. But, um... I don't play skew lists very much either, I don't think. Do you, have I not told you about that? So, oh, no, yeah, no, you told me about your list. I was just commenting that I don't think I play any skew list, really. Oh, okay. I, like, I feel like, um, Mis, I feel like Miscaven are pretty, pretty well-rounded. I think most vampire lists I play are well-rounded. I guess I was, I was saying um, skew as in the fact that, like, uh, crypt whores do the best when they are in larger numbers. Wouldn't you agree? They're kind of like trolls in that sense. Just what, like, what would you say is a large number? Um, I'd say eight. I'd yep. say eight Cryptors that kicks some nice That's ass. how I run them, yep. Yeah, so th that to me would be a skew, I guess. Okay. Uh, for me, I like having the defensive. Um, I just like being able to react to something and also attack on a different front. So I like having the Cryptors there to hold up with my skeleton blocks with the screaming banshees and the leadership bombs, you know. Right. And um, while that's happening, you have this heavy flank of vampires just coming around. The another reason I love the var, uh, var guys is they're vampiric. And I love not rolling for them to dissipate away my lord dies. I can see that. Um... I don't know, what would you consider the most uh, competitive list is? Because, to be honest, um, I didn't start using the Terror guys until near, I'd say, I played at least six games before I actually even thought about using a Terror guys, which is stupid. But it was just because I'm so, I was so, like, caught up in everything else, like, in the book. I just love the book oh, so much. Cool. It was like, Fuck, bro. I was brand new to the game, and Vampire Counts are my first Iron Man. I bought the fucking Terror Guys fucking zombie dragon kit. See, I, I didn't have that money. So you I bought to show one. you what the fuck I did? Oh, look at that. 
That's a fucking vampire lord and a zombie dragon. Guess how many times that's hit the table fucking once? Because then I'm like, wait a minute. This oh, like, yeah? fucking characters are right, monsters. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, man, I can't wait to see what Whoopi's going to bring out. Also, hello, lone viewer. How are you? Thank you for watching. I hope that this incredibly disorganized hangout is entertaining you. Seems like we have a bit different of taste. <laughs> oh, lol. It's so <laughs> tiny. Like, the old vampire dragon is ridiculous. Yeah, dude, why, um, why is it so small? I know, right? And it's a cool model. It just looks like a freaking, like, carrion. I don't know. Um, so, back to the subject we were on. We're taking... I guess Vargas would be a choice that I would choose that people normally don't. Um, you stated that you like Warriors of Chaos, I guess? Yeah, Warriors of Chaos. Because no one really so, does them. So, there's two. Um, no I obviously... Warriors of Chaos and the Warrior of Chaos Army. No one. No one does. No. Uh, the only time I ever did... Honestly, I'd rather... I use Bunkers of Chosen opposed to Warriors of Chaos, and I, I felt like it was justified, even though it's not. <laughs> it's just like, if you're going to have Warriors of Chaos, you might as well have the ultimate Warrior of Chaos. Otherwise, what's the point? That's right. Um, but anyways, so I love Marauders, and I love Forsaken. I love Marauders because um, I went on a... I, I am I I have Norse blood like in me you know and I love just North Norse mythology I've always been into that I've always been into Vikings and everything so Marauders to me were just like these are badass and I loved them even before that they were overused in uh, seventh edition and all that jazz and so I just have over. I think 85 Marauders set up, and um, I have this special side project going on right now where I actually made a war shrine of a bunch of uh, Vikings, which is like beefy, hulky Vikings, holding onto this ship, mm -hmm. carrying it in, and um, on top of this ship, there's this guy with like a gauntlet and stuff, and it's just, it's all war Marauder theme kind of stuff. And the Warriors of Chaos that are in it are going to be, like, kind of, like, the ultimate badasses. They're going to be, like, the lords and stuff. And um, that's purely... I just like Marauders, and I like the theme. It's not because I'm going to argue them as a competitive choice. I just think they're better than people give them credit for, and they actually have utility more so than other people think. But I, I don't know. Um, I look at them kind of like dwarves, and in that sense, comparing and contrasting, they have weapon skill 4 instead of toughness 4, which you, if you use the right magic, you can increase the toughness. I guess if you use the right magic, you can pretty much make anything good, but if you, they really synergize with the army's um, main lores, I'd say. Cool. That makes sense. So now you're gonna say Marauders suck. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Let's 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 hear it. Uh, Marauders suck. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so why do you think Marauders suck so much? Can it, like, tell me, and I'll try to say why I like them. I I'll try to defend myself. Well, like pure from a purely competitive standpoint. Okay. Uh, okay. E Ooh, I can take Throg, and now my core is trolls. I, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously, obviously. Um, I mean, so, like, that's the biggest problem. Or, like, man, you know what sure does kick ass? Chaos chariots. Um, yeah, honestly, that, uh, that, that's something that you, to be honest, um, when I played Nick, he brought a chaos chariot list, and it kind of mind-fucked me a little bit, and I'm like, I, I forget that you can do this. <laughs> It's just yeah. Well, well, that's the thing. There's just so many 
fucking chariots on the board, and they're all moving all over the place and charging you and getting impact and being, like, toughness five, so you're like, oh, wow, this but hurts, I, like, a lot. I guess, um, the... It's easier to take out one chariot than it is to take out a unit of 50 marauders with shields and Marcus Eage. That depends, I guess, on your... I guess... On your army. Know. Yeah, on your on the makeup of the army. Um, honestly, the looking through the book, I feel like you can honestly make three different kinds of armies. Um, they it's totally de set up so you can make a marauder army. It's totally set up so you can make like a horse army. It's totally set up so you can make a chariot army. It's a very good book. It's just unfortunate people don't try more things with it. Well, the thing is, the chariot army is really good because it's so fast. So, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. you fly your demon prince up, you move your chariots up, you fly your chimeras up, you move your skull crushers up. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Uh, everything's in charge distance on turn two. I'm not arguing that that is the most competitive choice. I would never I would never argue against that. Right, no, I mean, like, it's, it's just, <laughs> that's the problem, though, it's just so fast. So you're like, well, what do you do? I mean... I, I guess for me, it's just like... I guess another argument you could do is, like, if you're using marauders... Why don't you just play Beastmen? That's true. Um, but it's it's all aesthetic, and honestly, you can make any army competitive if you're smart and if you play the game long enough. It just depends on how competitive compared to these other skew armies like the Chariot lists with the well, Nurgle Demon Prince you and know, stuff. I mean, there's definitely like the thing is any I've always said any army can win any. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just true. I mean, sure, like, chances are some armies are going to have a better chance than others. No one's saying they're not. <laughs> but, like, there's always a chance. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I guess for me, I think it also deals with your meta because your gaming group develops meta. I know mine was very elf-heavy. And for to counteract that, like I said, uh, was saying before, volumes of bodies mm -hmm. counteract elves really well. And high strength, like if you can hurt them bad on the first charge, you're already winning. And it's at the point where like high elves and warriors of chaos are at the same leadership kind of level. So if you're winning the combat in the first charge, that means um, you're probability is you're not going to break. Hopefully, you're going to win the combat. Probability going towards the fact that they're all toughness 3. Um, unless you charge into something like a Phoenix Guard unit that's just going to kick your ass. But I'm talking about like um, things things that aren't um, always strike first in, in that army. Like right. the, um, the weaker choices, I guess. And um, using little tricks of manipulation, too, can also help out just beating a bit better army. Like, I used the Mutalith Vortex piece, mm -hmm. and I never used it to, for what it was made for. Um, purely, like, I would have it, and it sounds stupid to give away 250 points, but when they have Frost Phoenixes and... Um, like these monsters, what is the Frost Phoenix going to go for, you know? Is it going to go for your it monster first, or is it going to go for your units first, you know? And that depends on the player, but um, a lot of the players I would play, I would always set up, deploy my middle of four dex piece off from the main course of my army, and then just have my tank on Killable Lord there, and so it would always be right and crossed from the Frost Phoenix. So it's like, why is he doing this? Like, I'm going to just go ahead and kill this guy. And um, with that, you can usually end up killing him if you have the right setup with your Chaos Lord. Killing the Frost Phoenix, you lose 250 points, but you get rid of the Frost Phoenix. And then that's, I don't know, st stuff like that. that. Like, I just learned tricks to use a Marauder Army well, opposed to... Um, I don't know. I, like you said, I think most any army can be competitive. I I just went off on a rant there for a bit. My bad. Um, That's cool. Thoughts? 
No, yeah, that makes sense. Do you ever use diversionary tactics like that, like sacrificial lambs and stuff? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I play Skaven, bro. Shit, I love sacrifice. Oh yeah, yeah. So. What the hell am I saying? It's like but not the bronies. You can't sacrifice bronies. Oh no, with the bronies, I totally sacrificed one of my lances. Oh I mean, my I'll, god. I mean, dude, it's all about it's all about my ground knights and my lady and <laughs> like sorry other knights, but like you know. You can just see like the dark cloud shadow over their head and just one brownie just like. <gasps> well, bro, it's all about it's all about it's all about you know Equestria and saving everybody. You know, I mean, if they they died for everyone else, and that's what matters. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, when you make armies. Besides competitive armies, do you like adding in the fluff factor? Like, because I was talking about how I'm doing themed uh, Warriors of Chaos things to kind of be anti-meta, going against the grain, just because I'm sick of seeing all this stuff being used, and there's so much else that can be used. Do you ever find yourself doing that, or do you just play how you play? Uh... Both. I mean, I've made theme lists before. Like, I've played, like, you know, Strigoi lists with, like, all Crypt Horrors and Terry Guys and Crypt Ghouls and a Strigoi Ghoul King. And then I've also played, like, you know, all Blood Dragons. You know, all all Red Fury characters with a bunch of Blood Knights and Black Knights and stuff like that, so... How, how'd that do? I always felt like um, a lot of our guys, of our golf, uh, the Blood Knights and uh, Black Knight bust with a couple Blender Lords would be pretty, pretty kick-ass. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it, it, it did well. I mean, you hit stuff and it dies, like, for sure. But, um, <laughs> I mean, that's really... Yeah, I mean, I've, 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 been, I've done well with it before. Um, yeah. I mean, I never brought it to a tournament or anything, but the local games I've played, it's done well. I mean, it's all about... It's all about just getting it in Smash and Face, man. And there's one thing vampires do... Smash your face is one of them. It's surprising um, how, if they're set up right, they can do that, too. Um, my whole goal, and I'm going to f- freaking do it, and I'm going to record it and make bat reps, and I'm going to try. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to record my use of the Mutalith Vortex piece. That's whatever. Or my Freak Army. I'll probably show that off once or twice, because I have to. That's, like, my favorite army I've ever made. But um, I bought a Tomb Sphinx, right? Mm-hmm. To add into my Legion of Undead. And my whole plan is to have him riding the flank of my night bus with the vampire killing lords and doing that heavy flank charging with that and using him to tie up the monsters that otherwise I wouldn't be able to kill unless I use my vampires to murder them. So, um, I don't know if that's going to work out as well as I think it does, but it sounds like it's a viable like option, because that way you Vampire Lord isn't getting tied up with like Frost Phoenixes and stuff, mm-hmm. and you have a high chance of killing these stronger monsters with his ability to heroic killing blow and all that. And with a mixture of... Um, just a little bit of vampire magic and rerolls, that could be pretty devastating, I feel. I would say so. I think Hellish Regram that guy, yeah, it's pretty sweet. So, I, I don't know. Um, every, everyone's crapping all over. I just want to try to make him good. He's so cool. He's like one of the coolest Tomb King models that I think they put out besides those snake uh, serpents or whatever. I don't know if he'll ever be good, per se. Yeah, but they'll have a utility. Playable? It's playable. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the War Sphinx is so much better in every way, shape, and form. Well, the trouble is just, t- what do you got? What do you got Toughness 8? What does that do? Fucking nothing. <laughs> like, Toughness, toughness 8 is just fucking terrible. Um, yeah, like, it sounds awesome until... You start getting attacked, I guess. Man, it sounds like a Wolverine's in your basement. Yeah, my cat just ran across the floor. Up there. <laughs> so that's what you're... Wow, my mic is so sensitive. Dude, do you have a black cat? 
Uh, no, she's like cal. Oh. No, she's not calico. But she's like she's like black and gray and stripy. Please tell me he. It has yellow eyes, and like your hair, just on its body. <laughs> like it just. <laughs> yeah, just she, please. She <laughs> just. Yeah, like it, somehow he just grew the Naren Zane hair look. I know it's kind of. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's your you got it down, man. <laughs> but yeah, I so I'm gonna assume that your cat has this, and we're gonna move on to the next subject. Oh. Um, so um, I don't know if there's any other unit you would say that gets underrated, um, but just throw the last one out now, and we can say whatever after. Uh. Let me think here real quick. I guess... I guess I'd say Globadiers. I kind of like playing them. I, from everything I hear about them, I always found them kind of intimidating when I was playing Wars of Chaos. They're, see, it's the thing. Like, they're good against certain things, but like the problem is, man, is you're like, what do they do? Well, they like have an 8-inch range, and their ballistic skill is 3. Sigh. <laughs> so, like, you know, hitting on fire. Yeah, yeah. So, and they're Skaven, so their leadership's not very great. Yeah, they're, like, leadership 7 and, like, 10 points apiece or something, so... I mean, so... They just um, don't... They just, you know, oh, here's my unit of Globideers, what would you do? I sneezed on them, what happened? Well, they all died, because they all talked to Steve with no saves. <laughs> oh, man. That's sad, but they they have so much potential. It's it's kind of like the Forsaken. I feel like I would say so. Um, honestly, I I was enthralled with the Forsaken. I thought they were a lot better than people were giving them credit for, and I specifically went out of my way, like I said, to make a horde of them to and an army out of them to try to show that they're more competitive than people think. And, like, um, just thinking about it, the worst role they have is slug brain, which means they strike last, okay. And they don't have a very good save, but when they do attack, they have hatred. They're immune to psychology, and the random attacks, um, if you think about, like, a normal just warrior at all, they're at least going to have the normal attacks of a chaos warrior, right? Uh, Correct? Because no. a Chaos Warrior has two two attacks. Yeah. And if you roll one, they're frenzied, so they're going to get two attacks. So right. regardless, they're going to be at the attack level of, a, of one of them. Are the only thing frenzied? that is wrong with them at that point is Strength 4, but they have so many abilities that can make up for it because the hatred when you go in and you have a horde rolling D3 attacks for each one, and then doing hatred with the frenzy, it tears up so much. It's like it's like the witch unit before it was developed and made good. <laughs> well, I think the problem is they're just really expensive, aren't they? Exactly, exactly. That's the whole point. Like, um, for me to take a unit of forty of them, it's eight hundred points. No joke. It's like yeah, um, it's an eight hundred point unit, but. Um, I build my army to try to... I, I do it intelligently, I guess, so it's not like they're going to die, but they are going to be... I, I know that they're going to be the center of attention, but and I mean, so shit. I can use that to my advantage. You know what I mean? But, like, an 800-point unit, that unit ain't getting its points back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, every game I've used them in, I guess there's never been an 800-point unit to kill. So, <laughs> um, yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> yes, sir, you are correct, sir. I mean, the problem is, like, I feel like they would just get redirected. Because like, um, the, they're, they're frenzied. They're, they are frenzied, and they have hatred uh, the way I play them. But... If I use um, 
zinch disc writers like Eagles. Mm -hmm. And so usually I'm able to counter the redirects that they're going to do. And um, I'll use my unkillable lord and usually stack him up with a great weapon because he's unkillable. It doesn't really matter if he has one plus save anyways. Um, and I'll use him as a tank to tie up like the big things, you know, the things that would actually be able to totally harm my freak unit. And through that, you have um, not only your a zinch sorcerer flying around shooting things with bolts or whatever if you want them to, but usually I use uh, metal. Mm -hmm. And lore metal and boosting up their metal stats is awesome. Or giving them enchanted blades is freaking just the tits. And I don't know, I've had so much fun with them. It It's stupid, it's an 800 point unit, but I haven't lost with them yet, and it's fun. It's They're fun to play with. You don't care if they die. They're like freaking freaks of nature. Like when every time you see one get shot off, you're like, well, that's good for him. He's in a better place now. You know, they're, I don't know. I just feel like they're overlooked. Even yeah. if, you, um, if you don't want to take them in a unit of 40, which I understand, I, I tried taking them in separate units of like just using units of 10 or like one unit of 15, two units of 10, and then one unit of 5, and using the unit of 5 as like the chaff, and then just uh, similar builds for the boards and heroes, and it still works out really well just because of what they can do. It's, it, I don't know. I think they're really overlooked. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I think they're definitely... Uh, well, the thing is, there's just other choices that are, you know... Yeah, yeah. In most cases. Mathematically, mathematically better choices. I, I can understand that. I guess my whole thing is, if I was going to take Warriors of Chaos, if I had to choose between them, I would pick the Forsaken. Because I like the fluff of them. I like the way they play. They're not movement four. And you're going to be paying the same amount of points anyways in the end if you actually want good Warriors of Chaos. I just like playing Warriors. Like <laughs> Warriors. Dude, we need a... Are, are we throwing a gauntlet down right now? You want to do Warriors? Warriors, <laughs> Warriors Army versus my Freak Army? Let's do it. Let's do it. Corn versus uh, freaking Zinch. We never finished that fight on the Warhammer Weekly. Actually, we did, and I won. <laughs> yeah. I did. <laughs> no, oh, it's Slanesh. You see all these Nurgle releases? Slanesh won, bro. bro. No. <laughs> so I just didn't get a new release. All right, Nurgle did, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. God. He's you're right. right. He's, he's and I can't Nurgle. argue it. I hate it. He's, Shut up. <laughs> he's destroying the old world, man. I told you he was coming. Dude, um, to be honest, um, in 7th edition I was going to do a whole Nurgle theme, mm. and I was all excited about it. I'm like, oh, I got my Nurgle demon, I, I got my Nurgle demon prince, no one uses this, and I love the Nurgle magic, I love how it works and everything. And then the new book came out, and I'm like, wow, Nurgle's awesome. I do not want to use Nurgle. <laughs> It's, it, I, I did for the first um, bunch of battles, but uh, a lot of the times I felt bad playing the Nurgle Demon Prince, to be honest. It, it, it wasn't fun for me. Well, that's my problem. Um, I went to a GT and I went 4 and 1 at the boys with my fucking Nurgle Demon Prince fucking face punchy army. And yeah. yeah, the problem is you're like, here's my Nurgle Demon Prince, and then people are like, it's like what Anthony said. You just you don't play with people. Like either your demon prince gets fucking cannoned off or blown off or he fucking runs the table. One of the best examples I saw too of like even if it's not a Nurgle Demon Prince, um, it was Lord Tremendous fighting a Skaven army. And here's half of the Skaven army, and here's the other half with the most of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Guess what model destroyed everything on this side? <laughs> the Demon Prince? The fucking Demon Prince. <laughs> like, and if that can happen, I feel like there's a, a total balance disruption. And the thing also that upsets me about it is because I like the Chaos Lord. 
I like his the way he looks. I like the model. It's awesome. And there is no feasible way to pick him that makes sense over a demon prince because they cost end up costing more than a demon prince actually if you deck him fully out. Well, the problem is too he's not a caster. That's the biggest yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, exa exactly, exactly. You're like, oh man, I sure would love to have fucking competitive magics, but oh wait, shit, I'm playing a chaos lord. But I don't know about you. I also really, really like Nurgle magic, though. Well, I like I Nurgle really, magic. Yeah, like Nurgle's lore, I really, really like the utility of it a lot. I like it. I like, uh, I like Nurgle lore. I think my favorite lore, though, is Slanash. I can see that. Um, I feel like, do you feel like it's as strong with the Warriors? Yes. I feel like uh, I feel like a Slanesh Demon Prince is pretty great because you get the plus one attack, plus one initiative. I believe it is. Yeah, that that yeah yeah so that, that's yeah. true. My Demon Prince has nine attacks. This is gonna be awesome, and then he has nine attacks instead of five. And mm -hmm. I usually have. Um, as I didn't mean to interrupt you or anything, but oh. I usually have a lower level. Like a level two Slanesh caster um, with the lore of shadow, and then just give him a familiar, and then I feel like that works out pretty well in conjunction with the Nurgle magic as well. But um, I, I did try Slanesh magic for a bit, but I felt like it just I'm like okay, I have a better fighting wizard, but I don't necessarily want to get him into combat. Right, well, that's why he has to be a demon prince. Yeah, totally, totally he has to be a demon prince, straight up. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. But uh, have you ever tried a shadow demon prince? No. I have never tried that. I mean, in, the problem is there's just nothing, there's nothing in the warrior's book that you would want the shadow, really. Because like, um, you really probably don't care about their strength too much. Like, the thing with Shadow is the bomb spell is Mind Razor. But yeah. you can't Mind Razor anything, because you don't play, like, hordes of anything. So, I mean, like, you could Mind Razor, I guess, Folk Rushers. For but. me, it's handy because I use uh, Marauders. And Enfeebling right. Foe and Mind Razor is fucking the shit mixed well, with Fleshy yeah. Abundance. Oh, well, right. Well, I mean, in your case, like, obviously, we're playing a bunch of Marauders, but I mean, like, you know, your standard... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're standard, standard list, standard list, it doesn't really apply. I, I agree with that. You're like, what the fuck am I doing with these Shadow Spells? Like, I don't know, you can lower something's toughness. Bitch, all my fucking attacks are straight six. Just, it's kind of like uh, lower metal with um, a standard list as well, because, I mean, realistically, what are you going to be using their the utility spells on. One yeah. plus saved guys, like I don't I don't get it. Yeah. No, it just doesn't work unfortunately. Which is why, you know. Well, the other thing too is like to me, and I could be wrong, but death death lore is most superior lore. Like far and away death is the best lore in the game. I fortunately since I play a lot of good armies, I haven't had to play it that much. And oh. the person the person I played um, who ha actually had the Demon Prince uh, Chariot Juggernaut spam. Mm -hmm. He wasn't uh, smart enough to realize that he could use death. <laughs> um, I actually did the commission for his army for him, too, and I built him this just, like, kick-ass army, and somehow he always lost with it, and I'm just like, dude, how are you losing with this army? I, I mean, I'm using Marauders and Forsaken, <laughs> and, uh, it just doesn't make sense. It's just yeah. one of those, one of those pretty, things. Oh, yeah. No, Marauders, I mean, yeah, we've gone over it. They they can do okay, but are not optimal. But anything can win, so, you know, fuck it. Oh, my God, I have 12 Skaven left as far as teeth and shit goes, and I can drive up, and then I can watch them all. Oh, oh dude. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Can, can you take, like, a picture when they're done? Also, where's my pony? You said you were going to give me a pony. And actually, I still I have, have those. I have them all. I'm actually, I'm looking at them, and I have, like, the packages down here somewhere that I bought. I just, uh... 
Right now, I've been trying Skaven, to sell... Man. Skaven. Yeah, like, I've been painting Skaven, and I've been trying to sell... I bought 100... Oh, yeah, 20, yeah, yeah. 21 form DS Demonettes. How much are you selling those for again? Um, uh, they're also old. I guess message me... Unless you want it. them. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Um, I... I... I I'm starting a new project, like I said, with the whole um, Viking thing theme right now, and I feel like this Lanesh, those Lanesh demonettes would fit pretty well as the like, unit fillers. And my fiance also plays Slanesh. Do you want to buy a hundred Slanesh? One be no, no, <laughs> not a hundred, not a hundred. I have ten um, So I guess I, I have a question. Um, do you not feel like the ability from Harold to automatically pass all stat tests is like one of the most powerful abilities in the game? I didn't know that was an ability the Herald had. Isn't it? I, it was, I thought it was one of the gifts that they gave to the uh, Slaneshi. Shit, bro. I don't play him. I just buy him. <laughs> they have boobs, and they have lobster claws. It's what I'm into. No, these ones don't have lobster claws. These are the nice-looking ones. Oh, they, 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 they're not the uniboob penis lobster claws. No, that's, that's, why they're, that's why they're like 10 bucks a pop. Dude, I love New Slanesh, though, because there's so many ways you can make fun of <laughs> just demon heads. Like, That's why everybody wants to spend all their money on those pretty demonettes I have. Hermaphrodite, lobster clawed, freak, just slut pleasure demons from hell. Uh, it's, it's, I hate Slanet. <laughs> he, he's definitely my least favorite god. Well, Slash is realistically my most favorite. Because of, like, his whole uh, hold on everything, or just... I, no, I just think he's... I think that it's, um... I think that it's just an interesting, like, god for there to be, like, the god of depravity. Who, it's like, um... It's like kind of like Hellraiser, if you're familiar with that horror franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. My brother and I watched all the freaking... It's like it's There's like so um, many bad ones. It's like Zinch is like you know about change or whatever. Like and like that's scheming and stuff isn't necessarily evil. Corn is all about like war and stuff and like that's kind of like there's a choice involved in that. But in some cases like there's not an option really. But like and like disease is like not disease and death are like not really options. That just kind of happens. But like the depravity of Slanesh is like will you kind of choose really? Um, there was a, I, I was actually reading um, in the seventh edition book. It had a lot more fluff about the uh, gods than the new ones for some reason, and it was saying that like um, Slanesh is not only the god of like depravity, but he's also the god of passion, which leads him to be like um, the god of arts and uh, all forms of arts and cult, like passion. So um, the, it was describing how the only real quote-unquote evil one was um, Korn, but um, he wasn't technically evil either because he's just doing his nature, you know? His nature is to murder. Every, every other god, too, is doing their nature as well, and they don't see it as evil. Um, they just see it as, like, a way of life. Whereas... Um, I could see your point being the evil point of him is the fact that he's trying to usurp all the other demons, you know? Right. Well, the point is, though, is like, it's just that he, like, people choose to worship Slanesh more than the others, I think. Like, it, like it's, it's their, it's their nature. It's the, it's the evil nature of the human spirit that you know, makes them go from just being lustful creatures to, you if, know... If you think about it, like, what he represents, he's pretty much Satan. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. Like, legitimately. Um, to be honest, I think that's why I dislike him, because his depravity is so beyond imagination that, like, it just disgusts the hell out of me. Um, I like Zinch the best just because I like the idea that he has a plan for everything that's happening and is going to happen, and even the things that happen that shouldn't happen, he had planned for it to happen, which is just kind of like a paradox. It's like, what's his ultimate scheme then? It's like you'll never know. So I always found that really interesting about him. That and how him and all of his followers are completely shapeless besides the um, bird people that look like they're <laughs> from the dark... Uh, Crystal or whatever. Yes, so true. Um, but yeah, I, I I could I could see why you, you would like Slanesh. I just I find I find him disturbing as hell. <laughs> well, yeah, well, like that's why. Well, that's why I like it though. Is that I I like that aspect of it. Is that like he's actually like like you know no one's afraid of you know oh this guy has all these plans like well. Like if we're talking about like this grand scheme that was like impossible to comprehend, well, frankly, I don't comprehend the ability to think that way, so it's not terrifying to me. Yeah. Would uh, you would you be scared uh, more scared of someone who's enjoys eating his own skin to the point where he eats himself to death, or would you be more scared of the guy with boils like all over his body, you know, right, pustules right. just popping out, or would you be more scared of the guy that like will rip your skull off? I say the guy eating himself is the most fucked up. Right, like exactly, like that's the thing. Like it's it's he's he's terrifying because like that's like you know that's the thing. Like he is like he's just so foreign and so you know depraved that like, you're like oh wow, like that's disturbing because like you know we're, at this point we're kind of desensitized to violence. So like porn is kind of you know whatever. Oh man, people die. Well, sexual violence is. Just the ultimate, just exploitation. <laughs> yeah, it's so. like literally the ultimate, just like um, X-rated thing, or the most unimaginable thing, unless you really get bored on the internet. Really, really. Oh. really. And that's not that's not a path to slender thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that's like, well, you know, that's like the thing is he's just he's like I feel like he's the most. He's the most deceptive of the gods, and like you might be worshiping him, like not even realize it, and then by the time you do, it's too late. Or like you chase, like you seek him out for, you know, because you become addicted to this pleasure or whatever, and it's just, it's yeah, just, it's, it's it's the most foreign and terrifying of the chaos gods. I always, um, when we did our debate, I was like trying to think of, I like, be on the side of each one, so I knew what I could like just combat with, and um, the whole point about Zinch sitting in his tower saying, I have plans, just you wait, that really is what he does, you know? And then he just gets pissed off at Nurgle for his garden growing into his, like, whole beautiful landscape, you know? And it kind of makes him seem a little bit trivial, at that point, it's like, I have so many schemes that if you knew what my schemes were, you would go ravaging mad. It's like, yeah. okay. Yeah, he's, he's, he sucks. To me, he's the shittiest of the chaos gods. But, just um... Because he just doesn't seem to have a purpose. Like, I've never... I don't know, you, schemes never seem to work out. Did you read that, uh, about, like, how... Uh, I guess this might have been in the 7th edition book, too, how he was once the strongest god of them all, and that all three of them had to team up on him, and they broke him into pieces, and when they broke him into pieces, they created the waves of magic, so him actually losing, uh, being defeated created magic on uh, Earth for the warps of, for the warp to be manipulated, and that's why it's like the blue scribes to go around and recollect his magic and his uh, essence to put himself back together. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, when you think about that, it's like, oh. <laughs> dark, dark crystal banish it, man. Seems pretty cool now. 
I told you my schemes would come true. It's just, uh, he's, I don't know. Um, and with Korn, I was just thinking, like, he's the ultimate badass, you know? He's, like, right, that's, that why. Is, that's, yeah. that's what he is. Yeah, and that's what I'm you a big fan of him. I like, totally do. Well, I'm straightforward. I'm going to kick open this door, and I'm going to kill every motherfucker in here. He's like and the that's, Game of Thrones. You're like, that guy's awesome. And when I was thinking of, like, how to debate this, I'm like, there's no there's no debate. I'm just going to say that I am corn, and I will kick your ass. <laughs> that's, that's just what I'm going to say. Oh, you're going to manipulate me? Well, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> it's, it's like one of those old people that doesn't, is, like, beyond his years, but he's still threatening people. It's... I mean, it's just true, though. He could still kick their ass if he wanted to. If he really wanted to go out on war, I'm pretty sure he could take out Slanesh and um, Zinch. He might have some trouble with uh, Nurgle just because of his whole freaking over-expansion. He, he is the king of the gods now. Um, Nurgle, though, he was one of my favorites in the beginning just because... I love the idea of this fat, happy gardener with no idea of the plight he's causing to humanity or anything. And he's doing it joyfully, you know? He has this huge cobble pot where he's just making, like, new potions, and he's just like, oh, this is a neat one. And he has some, like, hot elf or angel woman that he, like, blows it onto who heals herself immediately. And he's like, okay, that's an interesting concoction. And then he makes some more. And then he goes out and tends his garden. And then as, like, his deadly pustule, like, pestilence goes on the earth, killing everything, his garden just grows. And that's all he cares about to the point where, like, the only thing that pisses him off is when Zinch burns down his garden because it's getting too big. And that's the only point where he's like, WAR! <laughs> you know? Right. Like, he literally is oblivious to what he does, which kind of makes him pretty cool in general. Like, the power he has without even realizing it. Yes. I agree with all of your points 100%. Thank you. <laughs> that didn't sound robotic at all. No, it's your story. <laughs> what um, you said was correct. Thank you, thank you. So how long has this been going on? I don't know, like two hours. Okay. Uh, to be honest, you tell me when you want to end it, and I'll end it. I don't have anything. Because you'll end it. I got yeah. three more skaven to paint. Oh, my gosh. Dude, I have 120 more skeleton to paint. I need to get this over with. <laughs> Uh, the so bad thing is, um, it was. What was that? I was like, fucking paint so many skate, but I've been at this since like July. Like, do you ever go yeah. into like a uh, rat like mode just because you painted so many skate and you just randomly like sniff around yourself and like get really just kind of ratty? And when you're at work, do you ever just be like backstabbing your oh, workers? Yeah. All the time. <laughs> it's like, I'm I like can push him off this. I'm like, the favor of the horn drive will be mine. They're like, what are you talking about? You're hooking up a projector. I'm like, you don't know me. So I'm putting my hand in here. Are you sure it's grounded? Yes, yes, it's grounded. Go ahead. Oh, God! Yes! The schemes of Zane have come to fruition. And apparently I turned into the monarch there for a second. <laughs> Uh, from Venture Brothers. Yeah. He was, he's the best villain ever because he is the most ridiculous, like, the deadly sting of the monarch! <laughs> it doesn't, it's like, yeah, that's, that's what monarch butterflies do. They, they sting things to death. And let alone Brock Sampson, that's all you have to say. Like, oh my yeah. gosh. The the first it was either the first or second episode where he gets buried alive yeah, and he just episode. like breaks out of this coffin, pulls a thing of tequila, chugs it all down. Hey, hey, <laughs> well, but you don't you don't need to tell me how much. <laughs> 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 
Oh god. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great show. If you guys have not seen Venture Brothers, watch at least the first episode, and you'll be. Yeah, you know, if you haven't, if you haven't seen the Venture Brothers, I would really recommend that you know, get in there, and take a little look. See, is that is that your Brock Samson? That's my best Brock Samson. <laughs> Dude, his voice is so manly. I I wish I had that. Everyone wishes they had that. Um, the closest thing I can do is like, God bless Tiny Tim. Things that bother you never bother me. I am happy and fun. <laughs> and I hate myself every time I do it. <laughs> yep, now it's definitely time to end this conversation. Yeah, I, I did that live online <laughs> for people to listen to and watch. It is, it is now invested in time. It is. It will never end. But, but yeah. to be fair, it will never be worse than God Bless Tiny Tim. Oh, no. Never. But that's the last game. And so now I'm going to go to bed. Because okay, I don't have anything. Oh, yeah. You know, once you paint, you're like... What is this? This has got to be like slave number 70 of the night. Oh, Sweet. dude. Vintage games, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. We can save that for our next one. But, yeah. <laughs> it's... It's just funny that we like brought that up in the beginning. We're like, okay, we're gonna be uh, talking about vintage games here, and then somehow I got off topic and got onto chaos gods, and then got off topic, and it's good. It's good. Oh, it's it's, great. It can, it all came back around to Skaven in painting, and if you guys actually watch this whole thing, God bless you. I'm sorry for my stupidity, but I have been awake for a day straight, and I have drinking a lot of caffeine, and I am basically kind of like a 12-year-old boy in that sense. So, <laughs> so that nice. is my terrible defense. No, that's cool. So, do you have any closing remarks? Um. Or was that? Or was that it? Ah, God, I don't know, man. That was a strong closing remark. All right, Basically, well, we'll if you're part of the, I guess they do. Uh, if you're part of the PMP and you actually watch this long, thank you for watching. Um, check out next week. We're going to be doing a weekly thing, or trying to be doing it. It we're not sure if it's going to be set on a date yet, but it's definitely going to be weekly. Um, so keep keep a lookout for that, and let me know about what you think about the incentive points and all seriousness. Uh, um, Naren, you need to join. I will join. It will be so. Okay. So, everyone. Peace out, you guys. Have a good night, guys. Oh, God, where's the stop broadcast button?